basically I'm here to talk about GIS, which means Geographic Information Systems. And just to get us started, I want to explain what, what GIS is. Um, basically, what it, I have a pretty simple diagram here. But basically, it, it combines a map on one side um, with a database on the other side. So traditionally, maps, you have a paper map. And what you see is what you get. It never changes. You can't click on it or, or zoom in and out or change the scale or anything like that. Um, now with the geographic info, and then likewise, you might have your Excel uh, spreadsheet, and you can have all sorts of data, but you can't really visualize m more than pie charts and, and graphs and that kind of stuff. So what the GIS does is it combines the two. So now we have interactive maps um, where you can zoom in and out, shift them around, um, uh, click on them and pull up data for any, any type of place, uh, you know, whatever database it's tied to. So it's really powerful. And basically, we can move through. And uh, what I did is I just pulled up some examples of, of how, GI, how GIS is used. And basically, it goes with almost all disciplines. Anyone who has a textbook um, that has a map in it, well, we can tie GIS to what you're doing if you have any maps. Um, it's good for analysis and visualization. So it can help show, as a graph, can help describe things concisely. A map can help describe things concisely as well. But also, it can be used for very powerful research and analytical uh, purposes as well. So to get us started, um, since Mary organized this, I found a couple of history examples. And so we just, we just click on this. And these will come up OK. Here we go. So this is um, a map that I found using the ESRI software, which we have a license here on campus. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, they're based here in Redlands. And here we go. So here, well, it's kind of history, humanities type of thing. So what you can do in this type of uh, situation is you can map out. We take a, a historical uh, story or event or whatever it happens to be, and we can map out, um, well, where Homer traveled. And we can kind of click through it and include pictures, the story of what's going on. And over here, you can see, OK, it begins in Troy. And so, I was telling Mary sometime when I took my history classes, I'm like, Troy, I mean, where's Troy? I mean, are we talking about, that could be Mars or the moon, you know? Uh, it's right there. It's like, right, you know, but Greece and Turkey, you know, that, that's where it is. Oh, now it's starting to come together. So, um, you know, it's great, again, for visualization for teaching. Now, with the, the program we have, you know, you could create something like this, like this, a little bit of a learning curve to make something this fancy. Um, but nevertheless, um, we have the software to do this. So you can click through. It just shows place to place and the whole story. So that's one way of using it. Do you have to be online the whole time? I mean, when you're using the map, like if you were doing a lecture, do you have to be online for it to work? This is online. This is the ArcGIS online oh. version that we're using right here. Yes. OK, so that's one example. Let me close. Let me go back Chris, here. can I ask a question? Yes, yes. On a, on a program like to make something like that, do you do it also online? Do you access the software online? Yes. Yes, and do it on. No, well, yeah, I'm going to get to that. And basically, what I'm showing here is the online version. We have the online and we have the desktop version. We have both available on campus. Yes, yes. It's a brand new license. That's why I'm doing this. We just got the license last year. Everyone can use it. Yeah. OK, so here's our next one. You know what? I, uh, no, I found out that there's an education discount. And it was so cheap. It's $2,000 per year for the whole campus, for everything. So. They're, they're just paying, administration just worked it into their, their software. But yeah, Jay Field said that's like, I mean, that's like pennies compared to other software licenses. So <laughs> OK, here we go. Another history example. Um, here we have decisive moments in the Battle of Gettysburg, again, for visualizing um, things. Now, if you're lucky and you're talking about Gettysburg, this is already created. Um, if you want to spend the time, of course, you can make your own. But uh, same thing, you can kind of see the maps of where the different troops are located um, on a, a, an underlying map of the the physical landscape. And this one has like a slider bar. So you can uh, I click here. Basically, as time progresses throughout the day, you can see where the troops move. Um, and now another thing that's pretty neat, and this could be from a, a research standpoint. You can click on, let me see. Let me go down here, show view shed. And gosh, the screen's not big enough. But anyways, it shows. Um, Let's say you're trying to reconstruct the Battle of Gettysburg. And you're, you know, why did Ewell, 
if I pronounce that correct. You know, why did he make these strategic decisions? Well, using the GIS, you can say, okay, we know he was here. We know the position of the, the troops, more or less. We can look at the view shed. So we can say, this is where he saw. This is the shaded areas he couldn't see, the light areas he could see. Now I'm getting into the mind of where he was at that moment in the battle. And now we can see why he moved his guys that way or whatever. So for a research standpoint, um, putting in three-dimensional, uh, 3D topographic information, other environmental information um, for research purposes, it's very powerful. Okay. Kind of keep going. I, political science. Here we go for. Yay. <laughs> and let's see what example I pulled up. Um, oh, the, okay. This is another one. ArcGIS. You know. The American political system is all about geography, right? And the, the popular vote doesn't matter at all. You win states, right? I mean, that's the way it's kind of unusual. It's all about districts and states and all that kind of stuff. It's pure geography. So anyways, um, there are databases. Again, you can create your own, maybe with the desktop version, and then you can show your maps up online. Um, so here we have, I'm just going to go ahead and open. This is just a whole bunch of data um, in this. We will open it, and now we can select our variables from here. So I'm going to go to change symbols, and we're going to do um, color, a color-coded map. And the variables, I'm just going to scroll down. I have all these different variables. I think this one was, let's see if it comes up. OK, I think this variable was the percentage of adults that um, that voted in the last presidential election. But anyways, there, I mean, there are a million, a million variables that are in there. So you can map these out and look at them. Um, potentially, it's at the county level. I don't know specifically here, but state, county, you can t frequently change the scale. Depends what the database includes. Um, but all sorts of collection types of information. So history, political science. Um, Is that in the software that we have now? What, now, these are maps, databases that people already created and uploaded. Um, Part of this ArcGIS online thing is the, the company, again, based in Redlands, they want it to be kind of the, the what's the word, like the, the Google of map data. So everyone will make their data, put it up and share it, and you can find Gettysburg, and you can find political science election maps, and people will just share it. So that's the idea. So you can make your own, hope if you're lucky you find it and it's already made. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I don't know, it, gosh, do we have any, I don't know, geologists? Here, but of course, naturally, the physical sciences, if I can find my, where's my arrow, there we go. Um, physical sciences kind of goes without saying. I mean, here's a, you can map uh, sub, subsurface or surface rocks and re minerals and all the research oil and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, geologists go out there and they collect their information. How do they store it and share it and analyze it? Well, here in the, in the, the geographic information system. So geology uses. Um, uh, topographic maps, I, I want to open that one. Your, your basic topo maps, you can pull up in here as well. Um, environment, here's another huge one. Again, environmental science consulting companies. Many of my friends from, from graduate school work in the environmental consulting field now. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to open. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, um, it's one of the big ones because basically uh, it's got PDF. It'll probably be too slow to open, so I'm not going to open it right now. Um, but all these, anytime you're going to build a subdivision or any kind of project, what do you need? You need vegetation maps. You need uh, uh, wild uh, uh, species maps. You need archaeological maps, cultural resources maps. You've got to map everything. And so what do you use to map this stuff? You go out in the field. You collect it using your various field techniques, whatever they are. And then you bring it back and you put it into the GIS. So all the stuff that's collected out in the field. So a lot of jobs for um, in that area, really a lot. Um, here we go, anthropology. A couple of these. Um, and I'll open. Here's another pre-made map. But this is Uh, this is showing, tracing the origin and spread of agriculture in Europe. So basically, the archaeologists get out in the field and they dig stuff up and they date it and they say where they found it. Um, but now, you don't just have your spreadsheet, this is the thing I found and what it was and da da da, you, now you put it on a map. And so you can look in, here you can do some analytical stuff or just visualize it, whatever you want. You can say, well, here are the, the earliest, the oldest 
pieces of agricultural evidence, and then as time progressed, we can see that it went up that way. For analytical purposes, you could say, okay, we know where this stuff is. Now let's look at the topography, the vegetation at that time period in, in history. Um, what are the likely migration routes given the topography and the vegetation? And, and you know, how did it really spread um, out, of, out of the Middle East and out and, and through, through, um, throughout Europe? So again, another, another use there. A prediction, this is anthropology, but not just um, Okay, we can scroll up a little bit on this one. Um, basically, for prediction, let's say you're out there in the field and you, you're finding, you're digging up, you know, little, little things from the, the ancient civilization you're studying. And what do you know? You know that we found these things within 100 meters of water and it's on moderate slopes, and it's near a, a specific type of vegetation. We know that's the type of place these people lived. Um, we want to find more, but we're not sure where to look. What do we do? We plug that data into a map, and it'll, sell, it'll say, you know what? These red areas are where it's close to water, it's got this certain type of vegetation, it's got this certain level of topography, and so you're finding your spots over here, the black dots, and you say, you know what? Gosh, I would have never even thought of looking over here. But the map's saying they probably lived there. So, uh, you know, for predictive purposes, then you go dig in that area based on the, the characteristics. So, there's also like fault lines? Anything, you can, anything. anything that you, any, you can build any database you want. The geologists get out there and they map fault lines, you stick them in here. Yeah, yeah. And let's go to our next page. Here, here we go, some crime mapping. <laughs> <laughs> urban planning, I mean, the list is endless. These are just things I came up with. Um, this one might be a PDF, so I think it might be going kind of slowly. Um, while it loads, I'll just talk about I mean, basically, as Fred said several weeks ago, you know, with uh, Freakon Freakonomics, um, you know, crime is at, what, a 40-year low or 50-year low in the U.S. And because, I mean, it's amazing what's been going on. Um, and, the free economics uh, theory is the abortion thing. I've, I've read another theory that getting lead out of paint and out of fuels, you know, doesn't mess with our minds, so we don't commit crimes when we're 20, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyways, if this loads, um, certainly another big variable, again, there are many potential variables, is policing, better policing. And so how do we do better policing? I hope it's all open. Uh, Crime mapping hotspot analysis. You look at where the crime, do you just drive your patrol car randomly through the city? Is that the best way to work? No, you, you go to the, the clusters where the crimes are and that's where you drive around because you know that's where the action is. So I mean just through, um, CompStat is it? The Bratton used, I mean it's, it's this type of thing. The Bratton used in New York and in Los Angeles and crime's just phenomenally gone down. I don't think it's gonna open. Okay. The list is endless. I'll, I'll show you a couple of uh, other examples. Oh, just put jobs thing. I might be overwhelming the machine. <laughs> Let's see where it is. So oh, there it is. Oh, here's our crime analysis. It did open. We just didn't see it. Okay. So, anyways, it, hotspot maps. I mean, that's one type of thing. So, uh, seeing st using statistical tools. If anyone's here for map um, to, to map out where the clusters, where the crimes occurring, that kind of stuff. Also, the routing. You know, you, we, here's the here's the emergency. Here's my police car or my fire truck or whatever. What's the best route to get it there in the quickest time? Another all the routing, UPS and all of that, and getting moving your things across the city. Um, okay, so our other example here for jobs. I just kind of just quit, did a quick thing, um, archaeology and GIS. And, and basically, um, from what I'm hearing, um, Laurel Brees is saying, I mean, if you're, you're going to be an archaeologist or an anthropologist and you're going to work for the consulting companies, what must you put on your resume? I, I know some GIS. You know, it's kind of like knowing Microsoft Word. If you don't know Word, you're not, or Excel, you're not going to get hired. In certain fields, if you don't know this, 
you're not going to get hired. Also, I have a student who graduated from Cal State Long Beach uh, right now in my geography class um, with poli sci and um, uh, sociology degrees. Wants to get into urban planning, but every single job <laughs> wants the GIS. So she's taking my class now to, to get those concrete skills. So, um, oh gosh, now I closed it. Okay, that's good. Down here. Um, I'm not even going to open them. But uh, biology, same thing, the consulting companies, if you're going to be a biologist and you're going to be out there in the field collecting data, they want you to take your field data and, and know how to stick it into the map, stick it into the GIS. I mean, it's just, again, it's like Microsoft Word or Excel these days in, in certain areas. Um, geology, same thing. Political science, um, a lot of the professor teaching jobs wanted GIS. I, don't, I didn't know what to search for for political consultant. I don't know, but yeah. It would, yeah. So probably okay, something sure. like that. Especially, especially if you're talking about you know, campaign consultants and stuff like that, it's, it's huge. It's got to be, right. Again, again, it's all about geography and yeah. drawing your boundaries and targeting certain districts and all that, all the demographics. And, Absolutely. Yeah, all of that. OK. So here we go. Uh, here at the college, um, basically the class we offer is Geography 10. Um, I've been teaching it online um, partially because I get professionals. Uh, like this person who finished um, Cal State Long Beach, others are already in consulting companies and they realize that they, they got to get these skills. So that, I started doing it online. It's kind of tough because people get frustrated and I can't help them directly. So I, I go back and forth. But anyways, right now it's been teaching, I've been doing it online. Um, so we have the campus-wide site license now. Um, administrative uses, we can see what Maria has been doing. We use it here and <laughs> I'll pull up, let's see what's a good map for us. Uh, should I just do, I'll just do our first one here. Yeah, just do yeah, yeah, it. So, um, there we go, 2008 enrollment by campus. So, uh, Maria took all, every student's address, right? And, and mapped out, and mapped it out by race and ethnicity, I think? Um, I don't know, maybe not on this okay. one, but, but on some of them you do. Yeah. yeah, my campus attended. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, so anyways, but we, we take, we, and this is used for what purposes? I mean, you create these maps for who? Uh, well, this, back in 2008, that's when I first took a GIS class at Rio Hondo mm -hmm. um, for like a week, and so this was just kind of uh, to test out how we would be able to use GIS okay. to kind of visualize where our students come from. So um, I, sent, I made some maps that I also sent to, um, I think we presented to the To the board, okay, and you've made others. You're, more recently, you've been doing some more. Yeah, so I'm working. I'm going to um, create some maps for accreditation self-study as part of our introduction to talk about our demographics. The demographics and where, where our students live yeah. and who they are. And okay, and again, it's a great visual, <laughs> visual tool. So we're, we are using it here. Uh, that's the desktop version yeah. that Maria's working with um, to create, create this data. I'm just going to close. Is that available to us? I mean, can anybody access those maps? Yes. yes. Uh, the, the maps? Yeah, they're on our Oh, you mean the maps? Website. They are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just went to the, the link on the website. The ones that the memories made. Um, so, uh, so it, now we have this RGS online. I saw. I showed you some of the examples. Um, we have a, an online. Any student or any person get, can do a free public account, and you can do. You can create your own maps and that kind of stuff. We also have limited campus accounts. Um, we have like a hundred people at a time. But the thing is, we have we have these credits. So if you go online and you start doing all sorts of fancy, weird analysis, you'll burn through our credits and we won't have any left. <laughs> and I can't limit it per person. So if one person geocodes all the student addresses, it's gone in one shot, you know, like a whole year. Um, but anyways, most of what you could do, you probably do with the, the public account anyways. I'll show you some examples. We also have the desktop version. Um, if you want it installed on your campus computer, contact Roger Islasat. Islas, Islas Lasso. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, and he they, and they'll come and install it on your 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 desktop here in the in the on campus. Uh, we also have unlimited one year licenses for off campus. So if you want to work at home, uh, contact me. I have a DVD, or you can just download it online and just renew it each year, so you can work at home as well um, on your desktop. And we also, for Maria, and, and once you guys start, we have the ESRI virtual campus labs, so all the courses. So you can teach yourself how to use the software and coordinate systems if you want, and geoprocessing, all, all, sort of, all sorts of things are in there. So again, if you ever want that, just let me know. I'll, I'll get you a code and you can use it off, off 
you go. Um, OK, so I, I said a couple of examples like for business and sociology or really any of the so, um, social um, sciences or really anyone that needs demographic data. We have community analysts. And this is, again, one of those limited 100 people at a time can use. Uh, let me log into this. So this basically, I'll show you in a second. OK, here we go. Um, basically, this is a um, pre-developed, uh, it's got massive amounts of demographic data. So anyone who, who is interested in, in their classroom showing um, census data and other types of data, uh, they can pull this up. Again, I would have to get you, get you registered into the system if you want to use this. Just let me know. Um, so let me just show you. We'll go click up here on Maps. And I'm going to close this. And let's, we'll zoom into the LA area. Here, this is kind of a bad zoom, but not good enough. Then we're going to create a map and a color-coded map. And we can look at all our different variables. So, I don't know what's a good education. No big education. Now we can. That's a good one. 2013. So basically, they'll take census data and they'll. They'll update it to keep it current year to year using estimates. Um, so we could do, I don't know, 2013 uh, graduate professional. Let's, let's see where the graduate professional degree people live. There we go. Move our map a little bit, maybe. Okay. So I'm. Redraw. Um, so basically, I mean, again, you can any kind of race and ethnicity and income and education. So here we have the professional degrees, which tend to be in the more expensive, you know, coastal areas. And no surprise here, it's not in the inner inner part of the city. But anyways, you can pull up all sorts of data. Great for using in the classroom if you want. Um, let me show another one. I'm going to log out of this. Business. Again. Okay, so this is Esri Business Analyst. Um, to be honest, I was looking at it, and it's like almost all the exact same variables. I'm still not sure what the difference is between community analyst and business <laughs> analyst outside of the name and the colors. Um, but I'm sure there are a couple of differences. <laughs> but anyways, I'll pull it up. Here we go. Same thing. We'll go to our maps. Um, let's close this, and we'll, we'll zoom into LA again. And we'll create a map. Here we go. Our variables, again, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, but for this one, I'll, this variable was in the other one, but I'll use it because it's more of a business-related um, uh, uh, market segment uh, segmentation, tapestry. Um, basically, they take, how do you describe it? They basically take neighborhoods that have sim similar characteristics, a whole bunch of variables that are cl clustered together, and they'll, and we'll give them funny names. So um, we can look for, let's go by households, and we'll look for the, the neighborhood that is called laptops and lattes. So anyways, yeah, you see, we have, these are, again, these are, they take a whole bunch of different cons consumption and demographic things, and they, they use statistical techniques to find the ones that are very similar. So you'll have the, 
the top rung tapestry, the suburban splendor, the connoisseurs, the boom burbs, the Pleasantville, um, up and coming families, and so on. So we'll, we'll go ahead and map our, our laptops and lattes um, cluster. So if you're a business person and you're going to open, say, a, a, uh, a, oh, a Starbucks, <laughs> a Starbucks or an iPhone store, what, what kind of neighborhood do you want to be in? The laptop and the latte <laughs> type of neighborhood. So here we go. Okay, where, where do we find these? Well, looks like kind of the, the West, West LA, kind of the, coast, the, the coastal Santa Monica Bay area, it following the coast along here. These are our, you know, kind of in quotes, <laughs> laptops and lattes. Um, you can get more details. Again, this is a PDF. I don't know if it's going to open that well. Losing this. Oh yeah, it came up pretty quickly. I'll let you the reference guide. Let's see if this comes up. So here's our, our reference guide, and let's just find the laptop laptops and lattes, which is let's see better up here. Page thirty one. Do that. Page thirty one. Ah. Tops and lattes. There we go. So, again, for business purposes, um, you know, it, it, it describes what do we mean by laptops and lattes? Well, it's uh, no home ownership or child rearing responsibilities. Um, they they enjoy single single life in the big cities. So this is the group we're talking about. Actually, an average age of thirty seven point six. That sounds a little bit more like. Um, empty nesters, maybe, a, 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 based on that description, I don't know, I mean, if, if that's an average age, that's a pretty high average age. Um, yeah, socioeconomic, $84,000 a year, you know, what do they do? Um, they have iPods and notebook computers, they, they uh, trade and track investments, they review the news, they shop on eBay, I mean, it's just what they do, what do they spend their money on? So as a business person, hey, that's the neighborhood I'm going to target, and then there's, a, there's the new immigrant cluster and all sorts of different, you know, if you're opening, you know, um, that type of business. Okay, so um, I could I could go on and show you more business, but so those are the business exit marketing and site selection. Where do I put my new store? That kind of thing. Um, now ArcGIS Online. Let me show you. I'm going to see if this works. Field data collection. Okay. I'm going to see if I can put a point using my cell phone, if this will work. OK, because there is an app for this software. Find it, ArcGIS app. OK. And I, just, I was experimenting this, with this for Ray for the field class you were setting up. Uh, so if you ever have students that go out into the field and collect data, um, they should be able to we should be able to get you set up where they can collect data on their phone, and boom, it should, if everything goes correctly, uh, show up straight, straight there. So I'm going to just see if this works. I think I clicked that button. Okay. So I, I just made, I, you can't see it, but I have, okay, I, I did a little very old vegetation type, so I'm, I'm going to put plant scientific, but we have a plant, and then I have a land use variable, so I'm going to say, eh, whatever, house, type that in, oops, got it. these small buttons, okay, forget this, then I have major ethnicity, okay, let's say Latino, there we go, and numeric value, okay, oh, here we have um, you can have a drop-down menu, so I'm just going to do palm tree. Let's see, I've got a palm tree, and I think that's it. Will it let me? No, is it not going to go? Well, I, you know what, I need to play around with it. But anyways, I'll show you, here's the one I pre-made. What it should do is it would show a little point right where we are. 
Um, I don't want to waste too many time because we're. And then you know you would click on it, and you would see there's the information I just put in: palm tree, urban, Latino. So if anyone, if you have people, they go out into the field. We can set you up, and they can collect data using this, using their cell phones. They need to be in cell phone range, as I understand. So if you go out in the mountains or the desert, um, like with a regular GPS, you can still work. I don't think the app yet does that if you're out, out of cell phone range, but nevertheless. So for field collection, uh, that can be used in the classroom. Um, and one more example. Let me go back to the map. Um, I'm going to sign in. Go to sign in. Okay, this is with a public account, so anyone can do this. Um, you don't have to get the special code from me or anything. Uh, we'll go in, we'll see a map. And you can add map notes. But basically, from here, you can have your students add lines, points. They can put a, uh, a photo on that point. You know, they can trace, if it's a history class again, the, the migration westward. And they can draw lines and say, yeah, at this point, here's a picture. And on this day, this happened here. And stick a picture there. And then they kind of keep going on. Um, so you can add information. You can also add underlying base maps, again, anything that someone's already created, you can stick that underneath. So I'm just sitting here and I'm a hobby genealogist. Mm -hmm. So I have all these old census records, right? Yes. Back in the right. part of the country. And so you could do a topographical map and see where the hollow was or the... the yeah, you know, when I was searching, I, like I came across a, a, someone who was doing some work like that and they were taking the addresses or whatever information they had from genealogy and they were starting to plot where their ancestors were living. So you wouldn't just have a written description or whatever you normally have, but you could start to map out um, where they were at different time periods and who lived where and that kind of stuff. Map out the farm they used to own or, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there was something that already existed on there. So um, anyways, uh, I mean, those are pretty much the uses, lots of uses. So uh, thank you. Any other questions? No, mine is just a real like Walmart Android, you know, <laughs> so and it works. It's kind of slow, but it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Greg. All right.